girl hey welcome back to my youtube channel thank you guys all so much for clicking and watching welcome and welcome back i'm so thankful and happy to have all of you guys here i want to kick this video off with a little bit of a question do something a little bit different and i really want you to be honest with yourself and just think over your life if you have been the same person, but changed settings, changed people, no matter what the circumstances is, relationships, whether it's a job, whether it's a new location of living, whether it's just a whole new group of people for whatever reason. And it seems to be like the same blame game, the same drama, the same negativity, the same toxicity. I want you to really be honest and think about it. And it could it be that it's you as the common denominator and not them. Let's get into self-sabotaging, girl. I think you might be self-sabotaging yourself and that's okay because I used to be the queen of self-sabotaging. I have my hand up first for it, okay? I was the queen of taking a positive, um, clean situation and flipping it upside down and making that thing just so negative, so draining. I was the common denominator in a lot of situations and whether I knew it or not, it was me. You, at some point you've got to realize that self-sabotaging is a thing, but I'm here to support you. I'm here to love you through it. I'm here to give you a solution because it doesn't always have to be. Your narrative does not always have to be that. And so I want to get into some things to talk about how we can stop self-sabotaging our lives, especially as women, because we deserve beautiful situations. We deserve to bring our worth and our value into situations and flip it and twist it for positivity. And that's what I want to give you in this video is just how to stop self-sabotaging your life. So let's get into it. If you're interested, let's go ahead on and get into this video. First, hit the subscribe button, comment down below so we can be great and grow, hit the notification bell, do all of the things so we can continue to become community, sis. I believe in us. So let's get into this video. <laughs> Alrighty, girl, as I was saying in the beginning of this video, just a little background really quick, nothing deep. I used to be the queen of taking a situation and making it negative. I was bringing my trauma, my past, my negative energy. I was bringing everything I didn't know I was bringing into a situation and people didn't like to be around me. People felt attacked when they were around me. I was very defensive. I had all these negative things going on in my life. And I didn't realize that when you build up those things over a certain amount of time, you bring those into situations with people. You bring that into interactions with people. Your narrative, you may or may not have asked for it. You may or may not have been aware of what was conditioned in your earlier inner child, your earlier life. And you don't realize that who you are, you bring into every situation. So we're going to dive into some things where we can become more aware of self-sabotaging. We can, we can dive into what self-sabotaging is so we can no longer do it because me being on both sides of self-sabotaging, I was the sabotager. And then I, I know what it's like to be a part of the solution. And I want to give you guys all of that because it's okay for me to relate to it. I, I think you guys can better identify if you know that I've been there. I've been there, sis. I have been there. Let me tell you. Okay. So let's dive into how to stop self-sabotaging. Okay. I have a little, um, notes that I've taken. I have notes down here that I've taken. So I, you may catch me looking down, but for the most part, I'm just going to keep it real. And we're going to do a little bit of conversing, but let's, let's dive into the definition of self-sabotaging. What is self-sabotaging? So this is my definition. Google didn't, um, help me out with this. This is what I've come up with as a way to present self-sabotaging to you. Um, self-sabotaging is knowingly or unknowingly creating or engaging in negative situations in your life, usually when there's optimal opportunity for positive circumstances and positive choices. That's the key words in there. That, that's what self-sabotaging is. That's kind of like what separates it from toxicity um, or separates it from other things that I've talked about on my channel. It's kind of like there's optimal opportunity for this to be a positive situation. There's optimal opportunity to make positive choices. It's just something in you is not clicking and you keep going back to that negative cyclic 
energy that's not making things better. And that's when your sabotaging occurs. So usually you live a very stagnant, you don't move forward, drama filled life, and there's no personal development. And if there is, it's like this much, very little for long periods of time. Tom, uh, excuse me, tons of drama and avoidable situations. Um, Personal relationships suffer tremendously. You see a lot of self-sabotaging in your interactions with people. It's just a given, okay? Personal relationships suffer uh, with constant negative interactions on daily life, and you are usually... Uh, not solution based and very problematic of some sorts. Okay. There are different types of self sabotaging. I'm not going to go over those because I'm not familiar with all of them. I'm just going to be honest, but I know en enough about self sabotaging to get us out of this whole sis. So let's move on. What I can tell you is that self sabotaging definitely stems from low self esteem of some sort, low self worth, not believing in yourself. Lack of self-awareness. You're just not aware of what's happened and what's contributed to this cycle of going into situations and not becoming better, not thriving. Why? You just don't think you're the problem. You're not aware of how is it that I'm contributing to these negative situations in my life. And here's the thing about negative situations. I'm going to bridge a little bit is that negative situations may not always be your fault. But learning to become a, a solution for your life is where it's key. That's what it is, okay? So there's lack of self-confidence. You don't feel like you're worthy of positive situations, so you typically don't act like it. And you do things that are negative. You talk negatively, negative self-talk. You talk to other people negatively. There's a, there, another thing is there's lack of self, um, insight, like personal insight. You uh, lack the emotional tele intelligence to realize that I might be contributing to this. You don't take the time to think it's you, you, if that makes sense. Um, you're negative, pessimistic a lot of the time of some sorts. Um, you lack being open-minded. Not everything works your way. Not everybody believes what you believe. Not everybody sees things the way that you see things. Your perspective is not everybody else's perspective. You've got to be flexible. You've got to be willing to bend a little bit in life in order to make situations work for you. This is not your world and everybody's in it. And if you think like that, you're going to self-sabotage every single time. It's never going to fail. You're very judgmental, negative towards other people's way of thinking, doing, seeing. You always have a judgmental response and trauma bound, meaning like you're bound to your trauma, whether you know it or not, that's where a lot of this stems from. So now that we've got all that negative stuff out the way, it's okay, we're acknowledging it. Now we're moving on to flipping the script, changing the narrative, becoming the solution. How do we see ourselves in a different light. How do we become the light is the question. That's where we're going with this. We're becoming different. And what I'm here to tell you is that if I can do it, you can do it. That is the whole point of my channel is that if I can do it, you can do it. Is it going to take work? Yes. But I, with every ounce in my body, believe for you that you don't wake up every day, walk into a room and want to be the problem. I don't believe that for you. You're you probably have been labeled the problem child your whole life or some type of negative name, the angry black woman. Um, what else? The difficult one. Oh, here comes trouble. All of those things. And then you start to believe those about yourself and you kind of live in that light. And that's typically where self-sabotaging becomes is the belief that you've set upon yourself and then your actions follow that. And that belief typically comes from the lack of uh, belief that was in you from your inner child. Okay. We're getting deep here, but it's true. Nobody believed the best for you as a child or some sort. It was altered as you were growing and you've taken that on in your way of interacting with the world. So the the issue is now that we have to reset that. We have to change that. It's going to take some purging, some work, some doing, and let's dive into those steps. Now we're, we're into it. We're diving into the steps. So step one is you're definitely going to have to get to know yourself better. Running from yourself is not going to help. Not acknowledging yourself. You're going to have to learn to love yourself. It's a process of loving yourself. That is the 
solution to a lot of things that people do not realize. You're gonna have to take some time to get to know who you are, understanding of who you are, and what exactly, what exactly contributed to how you show up in this world is going to be your solution to the first step of not self no longer self-sabotaging. So you've got to, um, showing up for yourself, I'm sorry, getting to know yourself gives you a point of navigating, okay? That's exactly what getting to know yourself d does, okay? What this looks like is spending time with God, Asking God to show you who you are in his light and who you are and how you be can become better. That's just part of it. You're going to have to purge. You're going to have to rip yourself wide open and say, what happened in my past? This is going to be difficult. It's going to be a lot of tears. There's going to be a lot of work. There's going to be a lot of issues that you're going to, you didn't realize were contributing. And this may take counseling. You guys know I'm a huge fan of counseling. You're going to have to sit with somebody who is non-biased and is going to give you some insight, some coping skills, some awareness, give you the lingo that you need, all of the things that are going to help you become better. I'm a huge fan of counseling because it helps. It's got to, you know, I've talked about it a lot on my channel, lots of videos, check them out. Okay. But, um, writing down you can write down the not so good things about yourself. What does this look like for you? Are these all things where you walk into life and self-sabotage your ability to be great? Do these things show up for you? Um, make a list of these things and identify the root. Get to the root. How did your childhood, how did your relationships with your parents affect you? How did your environment affect you? Your relationship with your siblings? Did something traumatic happen early on in your life? Get to the root of why you show up the way you show up. And I'm telling you, that's step one. It's gonna take some work and that's okay. Another thing I wanted to uh, talk about in the first step is you may have to take this season to be by yourself and that's okay. A season of um, solitude is okay when it's healthy. You may need some time to reflect and it, usually doing it with other people just doesn't give you the same reflection. It doesn't give you the same ability to kind of find who you are. You're doing it with no type of, um, bias, no type of, uh, opinions, no type of how you want pe people to see who you are. You're definitely figuring out who you are for who you should be. So that's definitely something you might want to consider as a, a season of isolation, solitude, where it's healthy and you can get a grip on who you want to be for you. So moving on to step two, this is going to be a series of reflections where you're doing this maybe in group therapy. You've picked your support system. You have a group of people who can relate to what you're going through and you guys can discuss things. You can bounce off of each other. You can see that you're not walking through life alone. You're able to accept things a little bit better. You're open to feedback. You gain insight on your own interactions with people. You guys can laugh together. You guys can come up with solutions. And this series of, um, reflection is so healthy because it helps you gain the confidence to move forward in the other steps that we're going to be building onto. Um, another thing I want to say is, so sorry. Make sure that your support system is a safe place. It's an actual support system where you can feel comfortable being open. You're looking for that safe place to be honest because this world can be cruel. Not everybody's going to take your information and not throw it back in your face or uh, not be judgmental or not give you criticism. These have got to be people that you know you can trust be open with and be vulnerable. This is going to be a season of vulnerability for you for sure. Okay. Okay. So number three is kind of like the fun part. It's, this was like my favorite part of learning not to self-sabotage, reinventing myself, all of those things. This is where you're going to work on establishing your identity. You've taken the first two steps to kind of do the work. It was a little gruesome. You found out your history, how things affected you. Then you went on to processing those things, making them a little bit more open. Now you're taking those things and you're saying those things are no longer going to run my life and I'm going to reinvent myself and allow myself to be new. This is where you give yourself an identity. You set boundaries. This is where you practice healthy communication. This is where you allow your new interactions to start taking place with people. This is where you kind of sit back and watch your new self 
kind of bloom a little bit. This is where you start exercising maybe. This is where you start eating healthier. This is where you allow people who are adding to your life to understand who you are. You're very vocal in this is the season where I'm growing, I'm learning, and I want you to either support who I am or you can dip. This is where you are becoming who you're becoming unapologetically. It is what it is. So have fun with this. Be, be, be intentional about who you want to be, but also allow yourself to bloom. This is where it becomes great for you. Next is a season of intentionality. This is like the actual action step. And this is where you have more awareness of becoming a part of the solution and applying all of your interactions. It can be a little uncomfortable because it's like a new season. This is where you practice listening more than speaking, letting others kind of come into the room and read them before you respond. This is kind of where you see everything come together and you kind of watch yourself. Um, this is where you're actually confident in that new person that you're developing for allowing people to actually experience the new you. That's the perfect word that I'm looking for. Experience who you are. This is where people might actually like give you a compliment on your, your light. This is where your light starts to flicker on for other people where it's no more second guessing your past between your new self. It's kind of action step that you're consciously moving through life and navigating this new person that you're putting out there. Let's move on to step number five. Step number five is my absolute favorite because this is where you keep moving forward in spite of everything. I want you to understand that life does become better and you are the change you want to see. It does happen. This is where you begin to understand your worth. This is where you know you're valuable to situations. This is where everything you've worked for comes to complete circle for you. This is where you walk into the same room you couldn't be in without causing a problem and they see your light and ask you how you got there, sis, okay? This is the step where you are the light that you never had the opportunity to be. This is where you see the change first and others come in wondering, guessing like, girl, who is this? Because it shows from, your light flickers from the inside out. You're not faking anything more. Any, you're not faking anything anymore. And you are who you've worked to be. And this is where all confidence sets in and your worth, your value, your self-esteem, your confidence plays a role. But it, the only way that confidence, worth, and value becomes constant in your life is if you keep going, keep moving forward in everything that you worked for. And it doesn't happen overnight. It happens in a matter of months, years, consistency, not giving up on yourself and believing in yourself when nobody else did. You do bring something to the room that you walk in. Don't let it be negative. Don't let it be something that people don't want to be around. I believe in you. You can do it no matter what has happened. You can do the work, change the narrative. I've given you guys some solid tips. So thank you guys so much for joining me in this video. I'm so thankful to be a part of your journey. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it growing. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope that this video added value to your life, gave you hope, found you purpose. And I will see you guys in the next one. Love you guys so much. Hit that subscribe button, comment down below.